Steam! It's a wonderful service. If only you knew what games came out on it. If only you weren't nosing around in the dark like a ravenous badger. Don't worry. Allow Eula Surfers to shine a light on the month's releases and give you a whatever, whatever badgers eat. A nice carrot. We begin with a bang! Lots of bangs! If you like banging... Okay, no. Uh, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes is a game where you disarm a ticking bomb, but you can't do it by yourself, no. Because this is a co-op game where any number of other players are looking at the bomb disposal manual and trying to talk you through it. Importantly, they can't see the bomb and the person with the bomb can't see the manual. And the best thing I can say about Keep Talking is that about three minutes after first launching the program, you and your friends will be channeling Mel Gibson and Danny Glover out of Lethal Weapon. Dot, dot, end. Okay, got it, I've got it. What is it? It is 3.575. Oh, I really hope you're right! It's right! It's yeah! Right, it's right, it's right, it's right. If the idea of this already has you smiling, don't think twice. Bye, keep talking and nobody explodes. It's hilarious, there's an incredible sense of achievement, and hiding in its bombs are all sorts of clever twists that I want to spoil, but I can't, so let's move on. You can Google Cool Ghosts Beginner's Guide to find Matt's lovely video on this, so I just want to throw in my two cents and say it's amazing. One of the year's must-play games. And now I watch as those two cents go tumbling away into the bottomless well of this game that needs not my approval, being, as it is, so obviously excellent and self-possessed. See, this is the problem. Us game journalists want games to be art, and then when they really go for it, we can't talk about art. We don't have the vocabulary. Oh god, I'm a dying breed. Look, don't worry, here's Downwell. Downwell will save me. This is a game where you jump down a well, and you have guns on your feet, and you have to get a combo. Watch out for combo breakers and monsters where you can't jump on their head because they're ghosts. Downwell might sound like a game designed by a random word generator. It's actually part of that ever-swelling genre of indie games that are embracing the tonal weirdness of 80s and 90s video games and then pouring all their time and attention instead into mechanics. Technically, Downwell's a platformer, but it plays a bit more like one of those bullet hell shmups that was designed using algorithms and a protractor. Here's the thing, you fall too fast, but you can slow your descent with the recoil from your feet guns. But you only have a few bullets, but you reload whenever you touch the ground or stomp on an enemy, and if you descend purely by landing on enemies' heads, you can build combos that regenerate your health. You get all that? Downwell is great. Your man controls wonderfully. The different worlds are all clever and different. And it's very Moorish. It's Moorish descending into hell with guns on your feet. And it's three pounds. That's nothing. It's literally no money at all. You give more money than that to cool ghosts each month. Don't you? If you don't like your platformers twitchy and lo-fi, and instead like them innovative and infuriating, but in a nice way, you'll definitely want Mushroom 11. This is a, uh, I don't want to call it charming exactly, but a darkly seductive game where you play a horrid goo that you can shrink using the mouse and then it grows elsewhere. Using this, you can slurp around the post-apocalyptic world and enjoy a bit of environmental storytelling. You can slime your way up improbable structures, squeak your way through disgusting gaps, and generally be awful. What I like most about Mushroom 11 is the sense that this wad of self-possessed unhygienic slop is unstoppable, which is excellently creepy. What I don't like about it is that it's often obvious how to progress, and it's just a case of pushing and pulling this toy you've been given to try and make that happen. And sometimes that feels like you're developing mastery over it, but just as often it feels unreliable and annoying, which is certainly enough to make me not want to play it. After Dark expansion came out for City Skylines, so I've been playing that. This is my city. Do you like it? Of course you do. I've whipped it up over two nights while listening to podcasts, and I felt like I'd died and gone to heaven. If you're not sure what City Skylines is, it's about four gigs of pro roundabout propaganda that teaches you the only thing that's hard about designing a city is traffic, and all traffic congestion can be solved by roundabouts. And the After Dark expansion adds zoos. Look, this is my zoo. And bus terminals. Look, this is the 
Quintown bus terminal and nightlife. Look, this is my nightlife district. Do you want to go to karaoke in Quintown? You'd say, and I'd say, yeah. And it has a day-night cycle, so different parts of your city become clogged with traffic at different times, and you might have to build early morning roundabouts or spooky middle-of-the-night roundabouts. Look, this building is on fire. Let's find out about them. Yep, it says here they're on fire. Look, here's my train. Do you like it? Mmm. I like it a lot. Ugh. Else heart dot break open brackets close bracket that's probably not how you pronounce it is an interesting new release from a spunky collection of Swedes set in the sleepy town of Dorisburg. It envisions a world that can be reprogrammed. Do you want a door to lead somewhere? Hack it. Do you want water to make you less tired? Hack that. Beyond this, you're bobbing along in a gentle plot that includes you joining a cabal of hackers, but also getting to know the town's trendy residents and bumming cigarettes. This is so a game designed in Gothenburg. I can't tell you. The 64-bit art style is pretty, and Els Heartbreak is creative and occasionally funny. I didn't get along with it at all. I found it slow and in need of a writer. Lots of people are liking it, though, including my friend Brendan Caldwell tweeting with delight when he came up with code that could brute force any lock in the game. If you are into your hacking, here's a game I missed last month. Hacknet is a spiritual successor to Uplink, which is to say, it envisions a world where you or I could hack the planet using a command prompt and basic problem-solving skills. Except it's marginally more plausible than Uplink, while still having the thing where .txt files eat up your computer's available memory, implying you're hacking the planet using a digital watch. Speaking of which, PSA. Brendan Chung of 30 Flights of Loving and Gravity Bone is currently hard at work on a game I can't wait for. This is an ancient trailer you're watching for one quadrilateral cowboy, which I believe is still scheduled to come out this year. And to quote Brendan, when you have a top of the line hacking deck armed with a 56.6K modem and a staggering 256K RAM, it means just one thing. You answer only to the highest bidder. This game is going to be a belter, guys. You wait and see. And I know Brendan's still working on it, because you can watch him work on it on his YouTube channel. This is a bit creepy, actually. And uh, what color is the first wire? Uh, the first wire is yellow. Um, hi. If you're enjoying this video, why not join the conversation at coolghost.net? And if you love all this ad-free content, why not support them on Patreon? Wires! Uh, oh wait, yeah, what color? Yellow! Uh, how many? <laughs>